Have you ever heard of something called the butterfly effect? There's many different versions, but here's an example. A butterfly flapping its wings in China today can make it rain in Iowa on Saturday. It's simply the idea that events affect other events. Here's another example. Vehicles driving on our highways right now are causing people who live in homes in Pacific Islands to lose those homes due to flooding. This is through global warming. Today, I'm going to tell you the basics of global warming, and to better understand it, you need to know both the causes and the effects. I've read numerous articles and books about global warming, and I'm very concerned about how it's affecting life on Earth. Global warming is being caused by an increase in CO2, or carbon dioxide, in our atmosphere. The key is temperature equilibrium, says the NASA Earth Observatory webpage. Of course, we all know that the sun warms the Earth, but the Earth actually returns or radiates most of that heat back into space. But the atmosphere does trap some of it to keep the Earth warm, and this is called the greenhouse effect. Now, having some greenhouse effect is necessary. To quote Peter Tans in the article, How Can Global Warming Be Traced to CO2 from Scientific American, he says, without it, our planet would very likely have a frozen surface akin to that of Mars. But if we have too much of it, our temperatures go up, and that would be harmful. As I said, CO2 is the problem. Most of the gases in our atmosphere do not absorb heat, but CO2 does, and CO2 is increasing according to NASA. Why is it increasing? Two reasons. One, we're producing more of it, and two, we're reducing the Earth's ability to absorb it. Edgar T. Ocelot in a 2007 Current Science article says, we're producing more CO2 largely because of burning large amounts of fossil fuels. What scientists did is they measured carbon in air bubbles trapped in ice in Antarctica, and the amount of uh, carbon re was relatively constant for about 5,000 years. But according to Ocelot, that changed in the early 1800s as the Industrial Revolution got underway. The atmosphere's CO2 content escalated rapidly. Today, CO2 is about 30% more abundant than it was 200 years ago. And as you can see from this chart, the amount of CO2 beginning around the start of the Industrial Revolution in 1700 has escalated rapidly. And as we get to the year 2000, as measured in parts per million volume, it has increased significantly. The largest sources of CO2 are transportation and industry. Now moving to this other part that I mentioned, the reduced capacity to absorb it, this is simply because we have fewer trees and plants than we used to. Of course, trees and plants convert CO2 to oxygen through photosynthesis, and according to the United Nations News Center, we are losing 13 million hectares of natural forest every year. That's over 50,000 square miles. Or another way to think of it is it's larger than the entire state of Kentucky plus another 9,000 square miles. Well, now that we've seen what's causing global warming, let's move on to its current and future effects. Global warming's effects are numerous. Currently, the Earth's temperatures are rising. The decade of 2000 to 2009 was the warmest decade on record, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. Also, if you look at this chart, these are the years with the warmest average yearly temperatures of all recorded time that we ha have such measures. And as you can see, these are all very recent years. There are definite consequences to this. Michael Lemonek in the article Turning Up Heat from Time Australia says, Glaciers, including the legendary snows of Kilimanjaro, are disappearing from mountaintops around the globe. Coral reefs are dying off as the seas get too warm for comfort. Drought is the norm in parts of Asia and Africa. El Nino events, which trigger devastating weather in the eastern Pacific, are more frequent. The Arctic permafrost is starting to melt. Lakes and rivers in colder climates are freezing later and thawing earlier each year. Plants and animals are shifting their ranges poleward and to higher altitudes. And migration patterns for animals as diverse as polar bears, butterflies, and beluga whales are being disrupted. Another concern is melting, uh, including the, the, uh, the glaciers melting in the Himalayan mountains. This is according to The Independent in an August 2010 article, and as you can see in these pictures, comparing what it was like in 1950 to 2007, in 2007 there's a whole lake of water from the melted glaciers that was not there at all in 1950. Another example is in Greenland 
where an ice island 160 miles broke off in August of 2010, says Andrew Revkin in the New York Times. And as you see in this visual, that entire island, which as I said is 160 square miles, broke off, went into the ocean and melted. Because of this, the world's oceans are rising, and people in some Pacific islands are already losing their homes as the water encroaches it. And to quote Lemonek, Florida farmland up to 300 meters inland from Biscayne Bay is being infiltrated by salt water, rendering the land too toxic for crops. Salt water is also nibbling at the edges of farms on Maryland's eastern shore. This is also going to lead to disruptions in weather, says Al Gore in his book, An Inconvenient Truth. This includes more tornadoes and more hurricanes. And in fact, in 2004, there was a hurricane in the South Atlantic. This hurricane actually hit Brazil. Meteorologists had previously thought that it was impossible to have a hurricane in this part of the world, and it is the first time in recorded history that it has happened. Looking at future concerns, continued temperature increases are expected, says Lemonek, and by the year 2100, average temperatures will increase 1.4 to 5.8 degrees Celsius, or 2.5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. With that, the climate of Illinois will become exactly like the climate is in Texas now. This will certainly have a major impact on life. This includes health and the spread of disease. Again, Lemonex says global warming is widening the range of disease-carrying rodents and bugs such as mosquitoes and ticks, increasing the incidence of dengue fever, malaria, encephalitis, Lyme disease, and other affiliations. There's also going to be a de decrease in the drinkable water supply. John Cassidy in The New Yorker says in West Africa, for example, 17 countries share many of the same threatened water sources, so there will not be enough water available for the populations and there is speculation that wars will break out over access to that water. As the oceans continue to rise, they will mix with fresh water in places like lakes and rivers. And of course, the water in oceans is salt water, so it will also make those waters undrinkable. Another concern, according to Gore, is inhabited lands underwater. When half of Antarctica melts, which could happen within the next 100 years, this is the change that's going to take place in Florida. This is Florida now. And then the area that's under blue here will be underwater, including all of Miami. One more example is Shanghai, China. Again, when half of Antarctica melts, this is what's going to happen there. And as you can see in that map, that Shanghai is there on the coast. And all of that will be underwater, and that area is the home to more than 40 million people. I've explained the basics of global warming. We've looked at how increases in CO2 are causing global warming and just a few of the effects. So again, consider that butterfly in China, a family being flooded out of its home on a Pacific island, and you and I, we are all connected by global warming.